Hello, and welcome to part two of America's War in Vietnam, 1970 and 1971, by learning the social sciences. So in our last episode, we discussed the shooting at Kent State. Today, we are going to be starting off, starting off with the repeal of the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. In June of 1970, Congress appealed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. Congress was reasserting control over the war and the president's ability to use force. The Nixon administration asserted that it primarily drew on the constitutional authority of the president as commander-in-chief to protect the lives of U.S. military forces in justifying its actions and policies in prosecuting the war, not the resolution. In other words, Nixon said he was going to continue on doing what he was doing. China out. Now, the Soviet Union and China were splitting away from each other and having a whole bunch of issues, even with um, some fighting up on their border between the Soviet Union and China at various periods of time. Anyway, so with this, uh, North Vietnam garnered support from the Soviet Union due to, you know, China pulling out its troops from North Vietnam. On July 1st, the United States, North Vietnam, and the Viet Cong again came to the negotiation table in Paris. It's what North Vietnam felt it should do now that it did not have Chinese troops protecting it in North Vietnam. Something that enabled them to send more North Vietnamese troops into the south. Operation Jefferson Glen. Operation Jefferson Glen was fought just west of the city of Hue. It ran from September 5th to October 6th and was the last major operation for U.S. ground forces in Vietnam. The goal was to remove rocket bases. Along with Jefferson Glen, Operation Tailwind was a covert operation into Laos by U.S. Special Forces from September 11th to the 13th. The United States was helping to create a diversion for the Royal Lao Army to put pressure on the Pavan forces that were operating inside Laos. So Nixon, with all of this going on, goes and makes a speech to the American people on October 7th, 1970. The televised speech proposed a ceasefire in South Vietnam. He had a five-point proposal that was based on a standstill, a ceasefire in place in South Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. He then proposed eventual withdrawals of U.S. forces, an uncondi uh, unconditional release of prisoners of war, and political solutions reflecting the will of the South Vietnamese people. Nixon said that the con uh, communist proposal for the ouster of uh, Toy um, Nguyen Kao uh, Kai and Tran Tiam Van Toy were totally unacceptable. In other words, the North was trying to remove the people that were in power in South Vietnam so that there would be a huge, huge gap in leadership. And so the United States was rejecting them. So by the end of 1970, the U.S. personnel in South Vietnam totaled 334,600 soldiers on December 31st, 1970. Entering into 1971. Now that the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution was gone, Congress began to reassert control. The Cooper Church Amendment prohibited any U.S. ground forces or advisors to be sent to Cambodia. It also declared that the United States aid to Cambodia should not be considered a commitment to the defense of Cambodia. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lard uh, stated that Vietnamization was running ahead of schedule in January 1971 and combat troops would be out during the summer. By January 7th, the last defoliant was sprayed in Vietnam. So now that the United States cannot necessarily go and operate as they had been, the South Vietnamese take over. So Operation Lam San 719 was an invasion of 20,000 South Vietnamese soldiers into southeastern Laos in February 1971. The goal was to stop um, the 
stop and slow down traffic on the Ho Chi Minh tra uh, Trail. One of the two, stop them or slow them down. The South stated that they were victorious, but in reality, they suffered 9,000 casualties. Now, when you're sending in 20,000 and you have 9,000 casualties, are you successful? The United States supported the operation and had 253 soldiers killed and many helicopters destroyed with their support. Now we're jumping into the domestic terrorist groups and individuals that rose up during the Vietnam War. On March 1st, 1971, the weather underground um organization detonated a bomb inside the u.s capitol building at 1 32 a.m nobody was injured as it was in the middle of the night but it did cost three hundred thousand dollars in damages now who in the world is the weather underground they are a group that originally came and splintered from another group another organization that was based at the university of michigan ann arbor and grew out from the student um, Democratic group that was there, uh, not the Democratic Party, but it just a, a group that was there opposed to the war. Um, the Weather Underground in 1969 um, rose on out from that. They originally called themselves the Weathermen, but then switched to Weather Underground, and they were a radical left-wing terrorist group. Their political goal stated in print after their publication, Prairie Fire, in 1974, was to create a revolutionary party to overthrow uh, United States imperialism. They were opposed to racism. They were opposed to um, the war in Vietnam, as they saw that as imperialism, and they wanted a change in politics and society and a shift towards Marxism in the united states now they did a lot of other um attacks they had 25 bombings in total they also um were involved in certain prison breaks um to help people escape from prison um they did lose three members of their organization when they were making bombs in a house in greenwich village and it went off and killed three of them um on march 6th and then you have other various attacks that they did, the bombing at the Pentagon, the bombing at the um, Department of State. Uh, you have a uh, bombing at a police station. They robbed an armored vehicle, uh, at which point three people were killed, one member of the armored vehicle, and then two separate police officers um, that were involved in the chase of the individuals. They were able to capture some people who were involved in the heist. Um, however, some others eluded capture until 1985 and 1986. Um, the United States classified Weather Underground as a domestic a terrorist group, and put members that they knew of on the FBI most wanted list. So we have other homegrown terrorist plots. Seven people were indicted for planning to kidnap National Sec Security Advisor Harry Kissinger and blow up government buildings. Now, there's this Catholic priest, Philip Berrigan, born in Two Harbors, Minnesota, that was among the seven that were involved in this plot. Now, he was previously arrested for being a part of the Baltimore Four, which took over the Selective Service Board and Customs House in Baltimore on October 27th, 1967. What they did when they took over the service board, they then went and poured their own blood and chicken blood over all of the records. Well, you can't go and have a draft um, and know what to do with the draft cards if they have blood all over them. So that's what they decided to do there. Um, now, moving on into the life of this Catholic priest, Philip, right after being released from jail for his involvement with the Baltimore Four, Berrigan, along with a high school physics teacher, went to the draft board then in Cantonville, Maryland, and removed 600 draft records and poured napalm that they went and made themselves um, on the draft cards and burnt them in the parking lot. 
Um, his quote, we confront the Roman Catholic Church, other Christian bodies, and the synagogues of America with their silence and cowardice in the face of our country's crimes. We are convinced that the religious bureaucracy in this country is racist, is an accomplice in this war, and is hostile to the poor. So with Philip, after his napalm incident with the physics teacher, uh, he was convicted of conspiracy and destruction of government property, but he had his case go up to the U.S. Supreme Court, which upheld his convic conviction. He then went into hiding uh, with a nun that he ran away with, um, Liz McAllister, who would eventually become his wife. Um, he then was arrested for his Kissinger plot to try to plot the death of Kissinger. Uh, however, he was found not guilty. Uh, they just did not have the evidence to go up against him at that point in time. There is Catholic priest Philip from Two Harbors, Minnesota. So the March in Washington. On April 23rd, 1971, Vietnam veterans threw away over 700 medals on the steps of the Capitol building in D.C. This spoke loudly to the nation to have this moment where you have vets giving up their awards, giving up their medals. And yeah, the next day then, uh, anti-war organizers claimed that a half a million people marched in an anti-war protest, making this the largest demonstration since the November 1969 march. On May 3rd, 7,000 protesters then were arrested in D.C., which sullied the entire higher march in Washington for this time period. It was going good. You had the emotion of the nation thinking about this moment where veterans are taking their Purple Hearts and their other medals and throwing them on the steps of the Capitol building and walking away from them to then now protesters being arrested. There's violence going on and 12,000 are going to be arrested on May 5th. This is obviously going to be the thing that is remembered then as it happened after. So elections in South Vietnam. On October 2nd, 1971, a nationwide election for president was held in South Vietnam. Incumbent President Tho garnered 94.3% of the vote. Although his opponent had dropped out of the race, um, you know, still have the election. North Vietnam was still calling for the United States to remove him from office, which we were not doing. So offense or defense? Several U.S. soldiers at Firebase Pace uh, near the Cambodian border refused to undertake a patrol outside the perimeters of the firebase. The refusal was widely reported by the media as a letter signed by 65 American soldiers at Firebase Pace to the United States Senator Edward Kennedy protesting that they were being ordered to participate in offensive combat operations despite U.S. policy to the contrary. President Nixon announced the next day that American troops are now in a defensive position. The offensive activities for search and destroy are now being undertaken by the South Vietnamese as part of the Vietnamization program. By the end of 1971, Yes, American numbers are going down. Remember at 1970, we still had over 300,000. Now we have 156,800 troops in Vietnam, down more than half a million from three years earlier. Yes, Nixon is pulling out the troops, but it's happening, you know, at a slow rate um, and the war is still going on. So this has been the lecture of 1970-1971 uh, for the war in Vietnam. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thank you for listening. Bye-bye.